But that, that's part of the views of these, these uh, globalists or Marxists is uh, Karl Marx wrote about in the Communist Manifesto, the two groups of people that constantly fight against each other, the oppressed and the oppressors. Really? Like, we all struggle in life. Sure, we struggle, we struggle to survive. We struggle against the earth. We struggle against lots of things, but we don't have to struggle against each other. There's, there's two modes of building wealth. One is cooperation, where we work together. That's capitalism. Hey, you killed an animal. I got a fire. How about we share the fire and the animal and we, we eat together? That's cooperation. Hey, if you help me, I'll help you. We'll both be better off for it. That's cooperation. Coercion is... I know what's better than you do, so you shut up, and I'm just going to take what you have, and I'll tell you what to do. And so coercion, and, that, and that's, part of the, that's part of the problem. That's, where, that's why we're at where we are today, where everyone's at each other's throats, because, again, back to cooperation, um, you know, how America was founded with individualism is, again, I do me, you do you. We can still be friends. You want to do those things? Great. I want to do these things? Great. The problem is the other side, as Van Jones says— your enemies, why do they got to be enemies? The problem is when they want to tell the other side what to do. So that's the problem. One side, you know, uh, if, if, if you listen to this podcast and it influences you, great. I'll have influence over you. But I uh, don't want to have power over you. I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to control you. But unfortunately, one side does. And that's where the butting head goes. Because again, you do you, I'll do me. But they aren't like that. They're like, no, 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 no. You do what I say. And that's where we come to a head. And so he says we need to, we can't let our enemies control the government. But what we really needs is the bottom up. And so the bottom up is what influences the government. That's what he wants. Now we have the top down again. Those are the politicians. And what we've seen, and it's, it's easy to see, we've seen these extremist politicians coming into play, um, into power, right? And, and they have these crazy policies. Even, even the own Democratic Party says that these uh, left, you know, these, this far left wing are, are too far out of touch. Even Van Jones himself um, was on TV recently saying that they just completely lost touch. They're using words that nobody would use. Like he said, they're so out of, even Van Jones himself. And he said, uh, they're using words like made up words like Latinx. He's like, I've never met, I've never met a Latinx person in my life. I don't even know what that is. Like, uh, right? Uh, th and so they're, they're out of touch, but also probably on the other side, on the, on the right as well, probably there's, on the far right extreme, they're, they're out of touch as well. The point is, is that there's these extreme people on both sides, these politicians, these extremists to push these top-down policies. And then the bottom up is then the agitators, Right. So then this is where you get the, um, you know, the protesters coming in, you know, piles of bricks showing up all over downtown. So Antifa could smash buildings, um, you know, all types of school activism and gun activism and and on and on and on. And all this chaos starts to create distrust in the government. It starts to make people feel very uncomfortable. And that's the whole point. They want you to feel uncomfortable. And going back to, again, Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto, and if you read his books, what he wants is he wants people to always be uncomfortable so they'll always be in a state or in a mindset of revolution. Same with Saul Alinsky. They don't want you to be comfortable. They always want you to be at unease so that you're always um, trying to agitate, so that you're always trying to push this revolution. Because once you, you know, you get married and you got a couple kids and you got your house and you're comfortable and you're happy, then you don't want revolution anymore. You're happy. Is that such a bad thing? Doesn't seem like such a bad thing to me. Uh, and so they want to they want to agitate. And what happens is, you know, we can we can withstand a lot of things. Uh, a couple things that we don't want is we just don't want violence around us, right? And so people have left. You know, lots of immigrants have come to the United States because in whatever country they were in, there was persecution. You know, there was crime, uh, no private property rights, etc. And so they're, they're tired of that. They don't want to live under that. And so they come and they live in the U.S. where there's supposedly rule of law. Unfortunately, now you see in major cities like Seattle and San Francisco, uh, New York City, where the crime rates uh, have absolutely exploded because, of course, they want to end the police. They want to defund the police. They want to um, take away cash bail. They want to do all these things. They want to uh, decriminalize theft under $1,000. And so when you make it, when it's not illegal to steal or resist arrest, then what happens? Then people steal and resist arrest. And so all of a sudden, these cities start having this high rates of crime. Now, why is that happening? Well, because, again, the bottom up. They need the agitation. They need you to feel uncomfortable so that then you'll push the top down, right? So then you'll drive the politicians. 
All right. So if that makes sense. And then, and then the inside out is where then us in the middle get squeezed. You have the agitators on the bottom, you have the politicians at the top and the, uh, the, the middle, most normal people, you and I we're like enough, we don't want this anymore. <laughs> uh, we need change. Uh, we're, we're, we're more than happy just to give up our privacy and our freedom. If you can just make it stop, just make it stop. Just bring peace back. Just bring harmony back. And I don't care if I lose my freedom and my privacy, anything. Of course, uh, that's what happens. That's what happened, um, with, in Hitler's Germany, right? After World War II, the, uh, or after World War One, things had gotten so bad there. And then they brought in the agitators. Hitler had his, uh, brown shirts, right? And they started causing all these problems and the people were ready for anything, anything. And so they went into that Czechoslovakia in 1948, uh, same thing. They had, uh, Soviet backing came in, ran a coup, a coup d'etat, took over the country, uh, but it caused so much agitation that the people were just ready. It, whatever, fine, give us communism. Take, take away all our, our free will and rights. It's okay as long as we just can have peace back. And so that's this agitation that happens. And of course, it's celebrated. Uh, here, Obama, when, when this was all happening, um, after uh, George Floyd um, you know, uh, died, and then we had all the protests going all over the world, he said, quote, I've been hearing a little bit of chatter on the internet about voting versus protest. This is Obama speaking. Politics and participation versus disobedience and direct action, Obama said. This is not an either or. This is a both. And to bring about real change, we both have to highlight a problem and make people in power uncomfortable. End quote. That's Obama. Of course, he studied under Saul Alinsky. So, of course, he said that. And so what he's saying is that, hey, look, uh, participation in politics and protesting, being disobedient. It's not about either one, which one's better. It's about both. We have to make people uncomfortable. End quote. That's from Obama. And so this is the goal. Now, uh, again, this sounds bad, but don't worry. There's massive hope and prosperity because I can show you how we can take the same three-part approach and use it to get what we want, which what do we want? I want me to get what I want, and I want you to get what you want. There's no such thing as utopia because <laughs> your version of utopia is a mighty version of utopia. So we all have our own. 